Welcome to Badass Reviews. The first ever time I'm doing a video review for a film. This is the first episode. And the movie I'm reviewing today is Ford V Ferrari. First of all, I would like to thank uh, TGV Cinemas for the premiere passes to the IMAX 2D screening of Ford V Ferrari. Thank you, TGV Cinemas. So um, let's move on into the review itself. So um, basically, Ford v Ferrari, the film itself, um, ascertained by the title, uh, chronicles a few years, maybe five to six years, that happened before the 1966 um, Le Mans 24-hour endurance race. And despite it being uh, built as a film uh, for racing fans, racing sequences and all that kind of stuff, the film is mainly, I would say, a film about friendship. Now, Matt Damon and Christian Bale, who uh, portray Carol Shelby and uh, Ken Miles, respectively, they are perfect together, they have excellent chemistry, and you can see that the uh, friendship is natural, it doesn't seem forced or acted upon. Uh, there's this one scene where they vent out their fr frustration on each other and it's um, like watching two kids at a playground and that particular scene just epitomizes their relationship, their friendship which is what the movie is about despite its name. Um, in the backdrop of course there is um, this whole subplot uh, revolving around a Ford Motor Company against Ferrari uh, in this case Ford Racing against uh, Scuderia Ferrari um, during the domination of Ferrari in um, racing you know for about a decade or so in the, in the, early, in the late 60s and early 70s and um, one thing that I have to give props to immediately is the racing sequences. Now, I mean, um, harking back to um, Rush in 2013 by Ron Howard, uh, racing films, they do really well when you watch it uh, on screen because it sucks you into the car and you, you know, you kind of feel in the driving seat all puns intended and uh, in this film the racing sequences are mind-blowing uh, you do feel like you are behind the driving wheel and you know every gear change every uh, rev every braking point you feel it um, of course I watched it in IMAX and so the screen is larger which didn't really give much of an impact actually to be honest uh, in terms of the white, uh, there's the screen, screen borders, uh, but the quality of the film itself, um, the photography of the film looks great due to it being either converted for IMAX or, you know, filmed with IMAX cameras. And um, the sound, the sound is fantastic. I'm, I'm saying it right now, this is a shoeing, a Ford V Ferrari is a shoeing for either sound editing or sound mixing because um, uh, like I mentioned earlier every ref, every piston movement, um, every gear change, every break um, you can hear uh, the distinct sounds and uh, you know the tires skidding, um, crashes, name it, anything that you think happens in a, on a racetrack you hear every single part of it uh, but the best parts of um, of it of the racing sequences are the silences. There are several points in the film uh, that uh, that um, where you don't hear anything, just the heartbeat or the breathing of the cat mouse played by Christian Bale, yeah. and um, the silence, as they say, is deafening because um, it's it's it fits right where it's supposed to be where where the silence needs to come in 
you, it fits perfectly. And um, as I mentioned earlier, the chemistry of the leads. Now, um, Christian Bale and Matt Damon. I mean, Christian Bale, what is there left to say about him? Uh, in 2018, Christian Bale was the, uh, was the lead in Vice. And he played um, Dick Cheney, former Vice President of the United States. And in that film, he had put on the pounds. I mean, he was obtuse, really round and, you know, fat. Um, physically, he had to resemble... Dick Cheney and in this film he has I would say not even half he is you know it's like he has lost 75% of his body weight because Ken Mouse was famous for being a gaunt guy you know he was fit but he was you know gaunt his face was gaunt and uh, Christian Bale uh, is perfectly casted and you know he always takes his roles that seriously that he loses the weight uh, you can literally see his cheekbones and such and um, you know, what is there left to say about him? He delivers a fantastic performance, as you would expect from him. Um, and uh, Matt Damon, you know, it's great to see the actor Matt Damon back again. It, uh, you know, I personally am a big fan of him. And um, his last few movies were not that great, you know, Suburbicon and Downsizing. So it's good to see him back in a, in a role which utilizes his, uh, you know, his undoubtable acting chops and uh, and he plays um, um, the American car designer Carol Shelby um, you know whose name is who, whose name is basically landed to a Ford Mustang the Shelby version the one with the Cobra and uh, Matt Damon does well and the uh, rapport is fantastic as I mentioned up top you know you can believe their friendship you can believe that uh, these guys, both of them, are really egoistical because of success and um, because of who they are. Yet, you know, there is a give and take between the two of them. Um, apart from the uh, the leads, the main leads, uh, Noah Zhuk, who played um, Ken Mao's son, he was great as well. Um, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, I remember seeing him in uh, last year's A Quiet Place. He played the younger son, and he was great in that as well. So I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to this boy's career. And uh, apart from that, the rest of the additional star cast: um, Tracy Letts, who played uh, Henry Ford II, um, Josh Lucas, who played um, one of the Ford executives, BB, I think it was his name. And, um, and uh, Remo Gironi, the Italian actor who plays um, Enzo Ferrari, the three of them were the standouts, and also um, uh, Ray McKinnon, whom some of you might know from, you know, from the TV shows like Sons of Anarchy, Mayans, and Rectify. He, he plays Phil Remington, uh, one of Carol Shelby's closest confidants and like his right hand man in the company. Uh, all of them did fantastically. I mean. I won't say fantastically well. Whatever role they were given, they played it perfectly. F yeah, per they played it perfectly. Uh, I won't say adequate. They played it perfect. That, that, that would be what I would say. And um, and special mention to Josh Lucas. I've not seen him for a long time, so I don't know what he has been doing. And uh, he really made me hate his character. I mean, that guy was just an ass all the time. Um, apart from that. Um, so I mentioned a few other things. Uh, I would like to say um, that James Mangold, um, this is his, uh, you know, his follow-up to 2017's Logan, and it's not the first time he's done a biopic. He 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 did uh, 2005's uh, Walk the Line with Joaquin Phoenix, and uh, you know the uh, biopic about uh, about Johnny Cash, and he seems to have a knack of um, you know. Um, inserting drama drama in the right parts of uh, of a real story and um, yeah I, you know you could say that the film itself is a bit formulaic you know um, because it's basically about how Ford tried to beat Ferrari in the 24 hour Le Mans in 1966 so yeah of course it's formulaic I mean the movie is it's about um, you know, the Ford racing team and Ferrari, so it would have to be historically accurate and 
And so in that sense, yes, it's formulaic, but I don't see it as a big issue. It is a bit long. Um, the movie is about um, two hours and 30 minutes or so, including the credits. And uh, it's a bit long and uh, maybe a bit of, uh, you know, some of the scenes could have been chopped off. And um, also, I want, uh, I forgot to mention uh, Katrina Balfour, the, the actress who plays uh, Ken Miles' wife. She was great as well. And, and, and another thing that I wanted to mention, the, you know, the technical aspect, I mentioned about the sound and the racing sequences earlier. Um, a big, big, uh, big shout out to the uh, DOP of the film, um, Fiden uh, Papa Mikhail. Um, he's a, it's a Greek DOP who hasn't really done, um, you know, anything of superlative note. You know, he's been, he, he, he does a great job all the time. He's worked with Mangold before, which probably explains, uh, you know, how he manages to capture whatever Mangold probably, um, you know, had outlined. Um, how the camera moves during the races is great, you know, in and out of the car. It seems organic and, uh, you know, not too CGI like other racing films. Awesome viewers, I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> but um, overall, I would give um, Ford V Ferrari 3.65 out of 5. And if you do have the time, uh, watch it in IMAX. It's uh, quite a good, good, um, I mean, I, I would say it's worthy to watch it in IMAX, especially because of the sound. And racing fans, you would love this movie. So um, thank you for listening. This is the first review that I've uh, done in a Y video. Um, if you like what you see, uh, do share, subscribe, and uh, like the Facebook page and uh, uh, su subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, this has been a presentation of Badass Reviews. So keep calm and rock on.